Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In my previous video, I showed you guys how to find breakouts using R. And in this video, I'll show you guys how to optimize certain functions so that we can find the best combination that will yield us the best return for these breakouts. So here are some of the packages we're going to require. So the get open high low close function will just grab the data from my database and that contains open high low close and volume data. And we have some calls in order for us to actually get the data and turn it into an XTS object and it will return the open high low close and volume. So that's all this function is doing. For the breakout function, I actually added a parameter called vol days. The rest is essentially the same. But for breakouts, I actually noticed that whenever the stock price breaks out on volume, it yields a much better result than actually not having the volume parameter there. So I'm looking for breakouts on volume. And the way I'm measuring that is I'm taking the rolling mean of the volume series. And here I have to specify the K, which is the rolling period. So we're going to take the historical volume in a certain amount of days. And if the volume is higher than the average and it breaks out, then we would return that breakout. Otherwise, if the volume is less than the average, it won't count as a breakout. So this will actually add the average volume as a column in our data frame so that we can later compare it. Another thing I actually altered was the actual comparison. So as I just explained, if the volume of today's bar is higher than the average and there's a breakout, then actually return that breakout. Otherwise, it won't count as an actual breakout. And again, you could leave that volume parameter out, but I've noticed that we get much better results if we have that volume parameter in there. So those are the changes to this function. So go ahead and minimize it. Now for the breakout performance, if you recall, I had one week, two week, four week and six weeks worth of returns after the actual breakout. In this function, I will just insert a parameter for the number of days to hold, and this will help our optimization. So we will no longer use the one week, two week, four week, or six weeks. I'm just gonna insert the number of hold days. So it'll use this parameter to specify how many days to hold after the actual breakout occurs. And that's done within the function. So the start date will actually be the breakout and I'm adding the days to hold in this parameter. So it'll take that range and I'm gonna return that performance for each of the breakouts. So those are all the changes to the functions. I'm gonna go ahead and run these functions. All right, for the optimization functions, I had to create another function to optimize where I will combine all the functions I just went over. So for the breakouts, the parameter is DF for the data frame, which contains the open, high, low, close and volume data. The look back days, we will set that as a parameter to optimize along with the volume days or the number of days that it should consider for the average volume. We will leave the close at high set equal to false. We will then use the breakouts to get the breakout performance. I'm passing in my data frame with my price series, the breakouts we just calculated from the line above and the parameter for the number of days we should hold will also be optimized in this function. So after we get the breakout performance, it will return the actual series with dates, the breakout prices and and the performance or the stock return. I will then use that series to get the geometric mean or the compounder return for that series. I will then calculate the standard deviation for that series of returns. I'll then use both to get the sharp ratio. And at first I wanted to optimize the sharp ratio, but I also wanted to get a consistent number of trades. So if I just left the sharp ratio by itself, I would just get maybe one or two trades with really high returns that would kind of skew and not consider the number of trades. So along with the sharp ratio, I added another line here for the number of trades. So if we multiply those two, I'm optimizing for a really high sharp ratio along with the high number of trades. So I want consistency and the high sharp ratio. So when we optimize, we need to flip the sign because it actually seeks to minimize. So I want the opposite of the sharp ratio multiplied by the number of trades. So that's our function to optimize. So for the optimization, I only want to consider integers. So I have specified another function here to round everything to zero decimal places or just return integers since we can have fractional uh, look back days, volume days or hold days. So I'll go ahead and run these two functions and we'll go to the next block. All right, so for the optimization, we need to set our lower and upper limits for each of the parameters. So if you recall, this is in order. So the first integer is actually for the look back days. The second will be for the volume days and the third will be for the hold days. So the minimum bound, I just want nine, nine and three and the maximum will be 252, 50 and 50. And you can adjust these yourself if you want lower or higher bounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these two. 
So I'll go ahead and use my function to call in the data. I'm going to split the data to avoid overfitting. So I'm just gonna do up to 2015 for this optimization. So I'll go ahead and run that. Now there's two ways you can do this. The first is run the optimization using a single core or without parallel. So this actually takes longer. And I tested this with 10 iterations. So it actually took approximately 420 seconds to run. But if we use parallel computing and use all the available cores, then the time cuts in half. So for 10 iterations, it took only 200 seconds, which is approximately two times as fast as using a single core. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out and it's really up to you if you want to use parallel computing or not, but there's a little bit of an extra step if you wanna use a DE optim in parallel. So other than setting your lower and upper limits and passing in your function to optimize, we need to set a control list. So our control list is taking in how many iterations we want to run this for. So I set this equal to 100. Parallel type set to one, we'll just run this in parallel using this package. If you set this equal to zero, then it will use a single core. And according to the documentation, if you set this equal to two, then it will use the for each package to run this in parallel. So I'm just gonna set this equal to one. We also need to pass in our variables. So most of these are the functions we need in order to run this optimization along with our data. The packages we're gonna need need to be specified. I set trace equal to true, which will actually print out while it's running and the fn map which rounds everything to whole numbers needs to be specified as well so i'm going to go ahead and run this block to show you what it looks like and if we take a look at our console all right so we got one iteration printed out so these three values represent our parameters so the first one will be the number of lookback days the second will be the volume days and the third and last will be for the number of days to actually hold so here we have printed out a second iteration. Uh, the number here is the sharp ratio multiplied by the number of trades. So since we set this equal to 100, it will actually run 100 iterations and find the best value. But I'm gonna actually stop this since we ran it before I started recording the script. So I'll go ahead and stop this. And if we go back to our script. So after this is done running, you can plot to see the parameters it's chosen. So if we take a look at that graph, here we can see the three parameters and the integers it has chosen. So for the first parameter, it chose the minimum. For the second, it actually stayed between 10 and 15. And for the third, it stayed consistently between 25 and 30. So let's then extract the best parameters. And we'll do that by running this line. So I'm going to go ahead and extract the parameters. And if we take a look at the best parameters in our console, we see that we got 9, 12, and 26. So I'll go ahead and minimize this. I'll then go ahead and apply those parameters to see the actual results. So if we take a look at the breakout performance, we have 400 entries or 400 trades, and this performance column are the actual returns. So if we were to hold 26 days after the breakout, this would be our percentage return for each of the breakouts. All right, so let's go back to our script. So notice I have actually inserted the full data set as the data frame to pass in. So when you run the geometric mean and standard deviation, the sharp ratio might be lower than the optimization. So I'll go ahead and convert the returns into an extensible object. And then I'll go ahead and plot the in-sample returns. So for Google, this strategy returned a 10x performance. Here we have our maximum drawdown of approximately 5%. We do see a couple of iterations where we do see returns of negative 10%. But again, this is in sample. So let's try and see our out of sample returns. So from 2016 to present. So the returns were not as great as expected. But again, you can play with the parameters and adjust the lower and upper limits for the optimization. See if you get any better results. So I'm gonna keep testing a couple of tickers on my end and I hope to find a couple of tickers that we can trade. Hopefully by next week, I'll have something in regards to a script for algo trading where we can just scan the market and trade these breakouts. So I'll leave the link in the description area where you can get this script. This concludes the video guys. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.